JTech Studios in Atlanta, Georgia. It's America's favorite game show podcast. Tell them what they've won. And now, here are your hosts, Tom Bastak and Mike Jacobs. Hello and welcome in. It's America's favorite game show podcast. Tell them what they've won. It's the game show, guys. I'm Tom Bastek. And I'm Mike Jacobs. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Hello, Tom. How's it going? Another beautiful week, Mike. We're working up here in the cold. I'm working between the cold and the rain and the snow every day. Man, that sounds rough. It's been like bouncing back and forth between cold and very nice here, so there's really no telling at any given time what it's going to be like. <laughs> well, they're saying six inches tomorrow of snow, so if that's the case, that'll be the most snow we've had here in Waynesville uh, for the entire duration that I've been here, which is December. Well, I'm uh, I'm envious. I would very much enjoy seeing six inches of snow. We're, we're doing all of our beer shopping today and be very stocked up, ready to go. There you go. <laughs> Got to make sure you're, you're uh, planning ahead. How's your Magic the Card uh, gathering, uh, the card gathering, Magic the Gathering, the card flipping working? Uh, well, it's going it's going well. Uh, I'm not making any money because I'm spending it all on, on other <laughs> cards. Uh, but that's okay. That's like sort of what I'm trying to do anyways. Um, You're creating stock for the store, essentially. Yes, exactly. I'm, I'm buying up stock uh, and uh, doing the same thing with cassette tapes, actually. And that's going really well, too. So Nice. Uh, yeah, I found two markets that I uh, really enjoy researching and making money on. Well, I want you to know you'll be very proud of me. I'm working on getting a, a double cassette deck this week oh very nice yeah it's gonna be great i i've got some old cassettes but also um i want that for the basement because where i've got the workshop set up uh i just want to be able to like pop beverly hills cop soundtrack in there and just jam out man i'm telling you that uh, that's what cassettes are made for the beverly hills cop soundtrack <laughs> exactly right <laughs> you know when we uh when we parted ways with our uh cassettes you know obviously my wife had them and uh we gave them to you which uh, I appreciate. The only, the only, yes, the only one that didn't make it, that didn't go, was the Beverly Hills soundtrack, Beverly Hills Cop soundtrack. That was a, a smart move, my friend. Sorry, man, that was just the one I couldn't part with. No, I totally understand. All right, well, this week it is our 35th show. I guess it's kind of a mile marker, right? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, in that we're five episodes away from the end of season two, which I had not considered until uh, oh, God. putting this episode together. Yeah. Which also means we got to start considering our next special episode. Oh, gosh, that's right. Well, I'm very interested in a behind-the-scenes episode where we talk to some of the folks that have worked on the shows, that have written the shows, things along those lines. I know Christian has a lot of those connections for us. That's true. We already have several interviews with uh, contestants as well. So, Oh, yeah, that, that'll that definitely make its way in, too. All right, Mike, we've got a bit of housekeeping to handle before we move on with the news. Indeed, we do. So we were talking about uh, in lingo how uh, in the English version they use five-letter words because that's the most common uh, word length. Uh, right. But then we surmised that perhaps in other languages the letter lengths were different. And uh, our friend Ryan from Canada, of course, being a French speaker, uh, was on the French version of lingo. And he has filled us in on uh, some of the details about the word length there. Hmm. Uh, so the way it works is... Uh, you have a returning champion each episode, and the challenger who is uh, then coming on the show to challenge that returning champion uh, will get to pick. Uh, they can choose from eight, nine, or ten letter words, uh, and then whatever they choose, that is what the game is using for the entirety of the show. Uh, wow. Meaning that the returning champion just has to go with whatever is chosen. Um and it also apparently changes the values at the end of the game in the bonus round um, in that uh, the longer letters uh, or the longer length word you choose, the more time is given in that final bonus round where you have to guess as many as you can. Mm -hmm. uh, with If you want to get specific, eight letter words, you get four and a half minutes. Nine letter words, it's five minutes. And ten letter words, it's five and a half minutes. Um, and what oh. this also means, though, if you think about it, is that the uh, producers, writers of the show, have to have all three of those uh, you know, eventualities planned for. So really, you could have an individual show for each of those three lengths. You'd, I'd hmm. imagine. Well, I guess that's kind of cool because it means less writing for the uh, for the folks who are writing the show, right? 
Well, no, I'm saying I, I feel like it would be more writing. You're writing three times as many. Yeah, but they're only using one of the three. Well, right, but then you have to replace that one, and then eventually the other two are going to get used. I guess you're still only writing one at a time. Yeah, I guess you're right. You're just well, you're writing more up front is what you're probably right. doing. Yeah, that's true. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. You're doing the same amount of work, but it is kind of cool that you get to do that. Yeah, I mean, I, I like I say, I, I just think it's interesting that 8, 9, and 10 are the most common letters yeah. in Can French. Can you imagine doing 8, 9, and 10 in the English language? Right, well, so that's the other thing, though, is like, would it really be that difficult? Because there can't be that many 10-letter words, right? And you probably would know a good deal of them. Right. I, I think they would they would sort of work themselves and I, out And I quickly. also think that they do a good job of making them more common words. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, that's definitely true. Well, thank you, Mr. Ryan. That's fantastic to have that insight. We appreciate it. All right, one other thing to mention is that we, the game show guys, um, and we've mentioned this in the past, and you've probably heard the commercials running the last couple of weeks, have a very, um, have also are, are able to be hired out. We do interactive uh, game shows um, over Zoom. Indeed. Uh, special events for you know friends, families, co-workers, however you want to uh, set it up, we can make that happen. Uh, of course, always, uh, as we mentioned in the commercials, check us out at uh, tellthemwhatthey've slash hire dash us. But we are going to be doing a special event for the public, open to all, anyone who wants to join, uh, a special trivia event to give you an idea of uh, what it is we do. Um, there will be a wonderful prize for uh, the team who comes in first place and and every team that participates will be getting some prize, so everyone will walk away a winner. Yeah, it's going to be uh, on February 21st at 4 p.m. Eastern time, so if you guys would like to jump on board, we'll definitely have the have it up on the website. We're also going to have it on the social, uh, but uh, tell them what they tell them what they've won dot com. Um, but it's going to be at uh, our Twitch site that we have. You'll log on there and you'll answer through Twitch, and we're going to do team trivia. So grab your team, get them together, uh, and be ready to tune in and win some uh, win some great prizes. It's going to be awesome. I'm very excited. All right. Well, I think that's all the housekeeping we've got, Michael. I think it's time we should check in on news with Mr. Christian. Yeah, indeed. Let's feel like fools while he gets another trivia question right. Light up your cigarette, crack open a beer, put the kiddos to bed. From chaos around the world to carnage in your very old front yard, it's time for the news. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Mike. This is the news brought to you by buzzerblog.com. So to start the news this week, got a lot of information about casting for series that are uh, maybe coming back. We haven't really confirmed that yet. Um, some new series that are hopefully coming down the pike pretty soon. So there is a casting notice going around from NBC for, and there's no other information about it, but a slip and slide based game show. Now we don't know if this is going to be on NBC or on Peacock, their streaming service or some sort of online thing. Um, but yeah, there's a, apparently a slip and slide based game show coming down the pike at some point. Um, and casting information is going out about that. And we will of course bring you more information on that uh, as it develops. Uh, we've also apparently seen some casting info for a new season of Holy Moly. Now they haven't announced and, and Holy Moly of course is the, the mini golf based game show in ABC. We haven't heard any official word that that's coming back for another season, but the fact that the casting is pretty uh, is pretty good news, especially around here. We love that show. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm man, we're we're big fan. fans. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And then to go along with that, uh, we have a new casting notice for the Chase. Apparently, they're looking for contestants for upcoming episodes. Again, the first season is doing pretty well, um, but we haven't heard any official word about a new season just yet. And finally, tell me if this show sounds familiar. Are you a thrill seeker, a mastermind? Are you able to think fast when everybody when are you able to think fast when everything is on the line? Are you ready to test your mental and physical limits? The insider is casting. Now a lot of people, especially on our Buzzer Blog Twitter, have pointed out that this sounds a lot like The Mole, which was a reality show back in the early 2000s hosted by Anderson Cooper and uh, a, a pretty interesting reality competition where one player was The Mole, was out to sabotage everybody else's challenges and things like that, and everybody voted on who The Mole was. So this sounds a lot like that, and this is a show that a lot of diehard fans have wanted to see a, uh, to see a reboot of for a long time. So uh, this could be that, but it could not be. It sounds pretty familiar. Sounds pretty interesting. But yeah, that's all the casting stuff going around. So we uh, we have a lot of new game shows coming up, and they are in need of contestants. And of course, buzzerblog.com is the place to go if you want to apply for any of those. We will have as much information as possible on that. Nice. 
I, I love the just the thoughts going through my brain with slip and slide game show. Um, but with many things that we see adapted into game shows, I feel like authenticity is going to be key here, which means they should really do it on a lawn without removing any rocks first. And so people and like with also putting the old, the old, like uh, spikes down that used to get, catch your, your stuff on it. Oh yeah, yourself. absolutely. Uh-huh. You shred your shin going down. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. Yep. Absolutely. I'm with you, Mike. Yeah. Just nice, nice, unsafe fun. <laughs> and maybe they could have like a qualifying round in the very beginning of the game where you threw jarts at one another. Ooh, that that is a good play. What about you throw jarts onto the slip and slide? Whoa. Oh, oh man. Christian, anything else you've got for us news wise? Well, a classic game show is coming to Netflix, and it's not Jeopardy. It's the other one. It's Wheel of Fortune. So Wheel <laughs> of Fortune is going to be on Netflix. Um, that is coming uh, very soon. There's some some of the modern episodes, so some of the current season, maybe some of the previous couple seasons none of the 80s glitz and glamour and shopping and ceramic dalmatians just yet but ah. uh wheel of fortune huge uh comfort food viewing so i'm i'm excited for that i mean there are so many places to watch wheel of fortune i feel like it's all over youtube you could find any number of episodes from just about any year you'd want to see but to able but to be able to see them officially in hd is pretty cool I would uh, very much like, I, I've got to go back and watch. I haven't watched any of the other celebrity Wheel of Fortunes except for the first one, but I know the cast of Holy Moly did did a um, did an episode. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. So I got I to gotta go back and watch that. It's, it's somewhere on my DVR, I'm sure. Speaking of which, this week, I don't think they're doing new episodes of Holy Moly or The Chase. I think they're rerunning the first three episodes of Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. So if you haven't seen the other ones, might be a good chance to do that. That's a great idea. Wow. Thank you, Christian. All right, Christian, anything else news-wise? Well, Jeopardy! is announcing, it seems like this is a weekly feature at this point, but they're announcing a new batch of guest hosts. Now, it does seem like these episodes have already taped, so uh, I don't know what the process is for announcing them when they do. Um, so the next batch of potential, I don't know if it's potential new hosts, but at least you know, the newest guest host. So we got Anderson Cooper. Now, Anderson Cooper was one that I had heard about from way back um, when the Sony leaks happened a few years ago. One of the emails that came out that was game show related was a conversation between the then producer of the show and Anderson Cooper. And a lot of people seem to think that he was being groomed to take over the show once Alex retired or passed away, you know, whatever the case was. So he's getting a shot at, uh, at guest hosting Jeopardy. Savannah Guthrie, uh, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, and a fake doctor, Dr. Oz which a lot of oh. people are really mad about. Yeah, you know, I saw that. I, I didn't know that he had been added. To, I didn't know that the other three had been added to the list, but I saw that Dr. Oz was because I saw a bunch of people up in arms about that. Right, yeah, a lot of people are really, really, really upset. Well, because he's, he's a, a champion of pseudoscience and all kinds of all yeah. kinds of strange things that we might not recommend our kids do. Or, you know, it's, 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 he definitely doesn't seem like he has the, uh, the credentials to host... Uh, uh, well, you know, in all fairness, though, they've got Aaron Rodgers coming in, and I have an unconcerned, unconfirmed source that he's doing two weeks of shows. Yeah, I think all the guest hosts are doing two weeks, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I that think that's the about standard right sort of right. And also, you know, Dr. Oz is on CBS Paramount's payroll, so it's not a huge jump for it, for him to to host that show since they're the ones syndicating it now. Well, you know, you can't have you. Know, it, it comes down to like the days of the week here, Mike. You don't you don't enjoy Fridays as much if you had two days off after each day of work. You know what I'm saying? You have to have a Monday in order to really enjoy a Friday. I don't know about that. I think you could uh, take a Wednesday off and, and get two Mondays out of it. You know? Well, maybe. I mean, that's definitely a possibility. <laughs> but you could also you could also have Doctor Oz for two weeks, then go. Oh God, please no, give yeah. us Ken Jennings back. Sure. You 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 raise a very good point there. Uh, when when does Maya Bialik get her run? I'm excited about that one. That's apparently pretty soon. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I'll, I'll, I'll check it to be sure, but I'm pretty sure Ken has six weeks of shows, and then uh, the other guest hosts. And I know that uh, Maya Bialik is, was one of the first of that first batch that they announced. So right. hopefully soon. Cool. That's great. 
All right, Christian, what about this week in game show history? Well, this week in game show history, we are going back to 1957. Now, the topic of the quiz show scandal seems to come up pretty frequently on Tell Them What They Won These Days. And this That's is because we be... love drama. I know. <laughs> well, it's a really, you know, I got to tell you, if you're talking about the history of game shows, it's a really fascinating topic. I mean, the fact that for a little while, all of the most dramatic big money game shows on TV were fixed. I mean, yeah, huge drama. I mean, they made a movie out of it, and, for God's you know, sake. I also think the other thing is, is that a lot of what came after that was touched by it, you know, whether it be through personnel or affected by the actual scandal itself. So the new legislation is being passed and the networks being hesitant as to what was how much money was going to be allowed to be won. I think that's why it comes up as often as it does for us. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, and 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 I'll get to my topic for the history in a second, but. Yes, the game show scandals shaped a lot of what we knew about classic game shows. I mean, you know, once those shows went off the air, there was a push to eliminate huge stakes. So shows like Concentration, which at the most gave away a couple thousand bucks, most of it in actual merchandise prizes, became really, really popular. And all of a sudden you had this new crop of shows that were focusing on the gameplay rather than the prizes or the suspense or the money or the totals or the numbers. So, yeah, it really gave birth to a whole, almost like a whole subgenre of game show. And also, you mean, one of the most famous game shows in history took its idea from the quiz show scandals. What if we give the contestants the answers and have them come up with the questions? There it is. Jeopardy. You know? Yep. Bingo. Okay, so 1957, we're talking about... Right, February 11th. So Charles Van Doren appears on the cover of Time magazine. So Charles Van Doren, of course, one of the central figures... Charles Van Doren, of course, one of the central figures in the quiz show scandals for his streak, his masterminded uh, sort of doctored streak on the NBC quiz show 21. So he beat Herbert Stemple, who uh, was proving to be unpopular with viewers. As a result, the producers gave Charles Van Doren the answers for a period of time, went on to win now get this, went on to win $129,000. So that today is the equivalent of $1.175 million. That's how much he mm. won on this show. And he got a job on the Today Show. He was a poetry reader on the Today Show. Um, got on the cover of Time Magazine and ultimately... It got to be too much. Uh, uh, Herbert Stemple blew the whistle on the whole thing, as well as some other events that contributed to the downfall of these shows. And he eventually testified before a grand jury, explained that he was the subject of a fraud. And he really just about lost everything and went on to uh, work behind the scenes at an encyclopedia company for a while, taught for a bit, lived in Connecticut, passed away uh, a few years ago, but not before telling his story to the New York Times in a really interesting article that's, I think it's available online. But yeah, this week in game show history, Charles Van Doren on the cover of Time Magazine. There you go, man. It's uh, it's so sad to like drift away into non-existence, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and I mean, talk about a forgotten star. I mean, for a while, this guy was the most popular man on television. I mean, he had everything. The Today Show was one of the most popular shows on TV. And, you know, to carve out an entire niche for this guy, he was he was the poet on the Today Show. Like, that's, that's incredible that they would make room for him like that. And, I mean, that has got to just eat away at you, though, right? Like, knowing that it was all... Like, I, I cannot imagine doing that without breaking down at some point, right? Like, Right. Well, you also combine that with the fact that his father, Mark Van Doren, was already a celebrated author. I mean, he came from a pretty prominent family. So, mm. not to mention his name going down in flames, but the name of his family as well. I mean, I can't imagine what that Thanksgiving dinner was like. <laughs> wow. Speaking of scripted shows, uh, we'll talk about the one that we're doing this week as our featured show in a moment. But right now, Mike, it's time for Stump or Chump. All right. So uh, in 1956, a 95-year-old man named Samuel Seymour was the mystery subject on the original I've Got a Secret game show. What was his secret? This was a fascinating one. So this episode, I'm pretty sure it's like public domain. I I've seen it on those like dollar DVD compilations of like the best 50s game shows or whatever, like at the, wow. at, like, like at the dollar store and stuff. Yeah. So Samuel Seymour was on I've Got a Secret. His secret was that he was the last living person to witness uh, Lincoln's assassination at Ford's Theater. He was in the theater when he was really, really young and was there for the performance of Our American Cousin and was there when Lincoln got shot. And he said that he remembered 
the confusion and the chaos and all he remembered was John Wilkes Booth jumping from the balcony to the stage and breaking his leg and he remembers only being worried for that guy who fell onto the stage didn't you know didn't realize that he had killed somebody up there let alone killed the president but yeah he was the last living witness to that and actually before he got on the show and I think they mentioned it on his appearance at the hotel that they put him in to uh, to do the show he fell down the stairs and gave himself a bruise on his eye and uh he almost didn't do the show but but he really wanted to do it so they put him on and he was he was in pretty bad shape like when they you know like when they had him on the show i think the only time that they ever dispensed with the consolation prize of a pack of winston and gave him a can of pipe tobacco instead because he was a pipe smoker <laughs> wow there you go. That is absolutely correct. And only Christian would know that, like, the pipe smoke. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, what can I say? Insane. Um, oh, by the way, um, Christian, uh, we have a follow-up from Randy. Uh, he said that you didn't mention the price of the vehicle um, of the Chevy Vega that was uh, – he wants to earn his second half of the point. He said – yeah, well, maybe what was the price of the um, of the Chevy Vega that was won on on the Price Is Right? So the first car they ever gave away in the Price Is Right, what was Correct. the price of it? Uh, yes. Two thousand seven hundred forty six dollars. Oh my god, that's absolutely correct. <laughs> Randy, that's Randy, enough Randy, out of you, Randy. Well, sorry, I'm gonna have to. Sweet, we're gonna sweet have to, Randy. We're gonna have to take back that half a point. Sorry, bud. <laughs> yeah, now, now you're down to nothing. <laughs> Thanks for All playing. Right. Remember, guys, you can always submit your questions via social or send it to the uh, tell them what they've won dot com uh, inbox on the website. Let's talk about Fear Factor, this week's featured show. Fear Factor was never a show that I really was fascinated with. I mean, the, the premise of it was interesting when it started. It was a reality show based on what people are afraid of. Can you survive a human's greatest fears? It eventually just evolved into this, like, what disgusting thing can you eat? Mm -hmm. And so it, it, I, to me, when the show started, I thought it had a really interesting premise, but it just got so formulaic by the end the only bright side being that it gave birth to one of the best Chappelle show sketches in comedy central history <laughs> yeah i don't think i remember that mike do you remember that i vaguely uh we'll have to pull it up and put it on the website yeah. refresh okay. my, it's we'll been a long time since i've seen anything Chappelle show related yeah wow Chappelle. there i miss Chappelle. yeah I do. it was a great show I don't all know right. if you're going to want to put that on the website, I'll be honest with you. But Oh, oh well, all right. Well, fair maybe enough. We will, maybe we will put it on the website. We'll, we'll let people find it on their own. <laughs> we may put the link up and say you could go here and find it if you wanted to. Viewer discretion is advised. There fair you enough. go. Fantastic. All right, Christian, how about a plug for BuzzerBlog? Of course. BuzzerBlog.com, the number one game show website in the world, whether you're looking for information on casting, new series, returning series, classic series, whether you're an industry insider, a diehard fan, or just one of these casual they keep sending me questions. Buzzerblog.com <laughs> is the oh, place man. to go. Thank you very much. He's goading them on. I love it. There it is. Casual <laughs> fans uh, unite against Christian and don't uh, get chumped. There you go. All right, Christian, thanks so much. We'll see you again next week. Thank you, guys. Have a good week. All right. Once again, if you want to stump or chump, all you need to do is send us a question in via the social networks or the, tell them what they've won. Com. Indeed. Okay, Mike, our featured show this week is Fear Factor. Uh, unfortunately, yes. Are uh, you afraid? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, fear is not a factor for me. I, man, I tell you what, I didn't realize how much I didn't like this show. Well, we'll talk more about that in the ratings, but coming up next, it's the gameplay. You've been listening to America's favorite game show podcast. Tell them what they've won.
There it is, the intro to Fear Factor, our featured show this week on Tell Them What They Want, America's favorite game show podcast. Michael, uh, I know it's not your favorite show, but there is some gameplay here. There, there is some gameplay. I'm not going to fault it for that. Uh, you know, there, there is, a, there is a true game at the heart of all this. Uh, so the classic format uh, will start with six contestants, three men and three women, and then they're all put through a series of three um, stunts, challenges, dares, risks, whatever you want to call them. Um, um, and they're meant to very much test their limits, both physically and mentally. Uh, I believe that's actually maybe verbatim what they say at the beginning. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's very close. Yeah. It's very close. Uh, and ultimately, they are all six competing for $50,000. The one thing you for, you failed to mention is that they're all extremely attractive. Well, I mean, it's a uh, reality game show. That's the thing. Yeah. You got to have, yeah. uh, you know, you're not... With game shows, you're pulling real contestants, right? With reality game show con- or competition shows, as I like to call them, um, sure. you're you're casting as much as you are just getting contestants, right? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And and you know, here's the thing: I'm I'm not going to fault it for that. And we'll talk more about the casting side of that when we get to ratings, because it reminds me of my time in Vegas. We'll tell that story at that point. Interesting. All right. Uh, So, yeah, like I said, they are all competing for $50,000. And over the course of the game, if anyone is unable to complete a challenge, does not complete a a task to uh, the satisfaction of the game's rules, um, you know, anything like that, they are eliminated, just kicked out. And it's basically just a last person standing wins. Um, For the first and second challenge, obviously, you got to make sure the game keeps going, right? You can't just have it end early. So uh, if only one person completes the first or second challenge, you can't have them go on to the next round by themselves. So they'll be given $25,000, half the the prize. Uh, And then the eliminated folks are just not eliminated, and they continue on. That way you still have a show. Uh, And then they just play for the remainder of the $25,000. Likewise, if in the first or second round nobody uh, does the the task um they all continue on to the next round but they just cut the the prize in half to twenty five thousand. wow yep um so how how do they do all this what are these stunts well you really got to watch a show to get the full scope of the (laughs) insanity that goes on but they sort of break it up into different themes so the first round stunt one uh is a sort of uh extreme physical stunt usually it's some sort of um, maybe climbing up the side of a building or, you know, uh, one was riding a bike on a very thin platform between two buildings. Just, you know, uh, crazy physical stunts like that. Um, and uh, for this one, typically what they would do is it's not a if you can't do it, you're eliminated. It's whoever does it the worst is eliminated. So usually there will be two people at the end of that round, one one female, one male, uh, who is like you, you did it in the slowest amount of time or you collected the least amount of flags or you jumped the least amount of distance. Whatever the physical task is, there's a way to measure how each person did, right? At the uh, at the end of the show in the sixth season, not at the end of each episode, but I mean at the end of the run of the show in the sixth season, uh, they uh, would sometimes allow for uh, the best performing team to choose w- who was eliminated. Uh, and I oh, say wow. I say team because in the sixth uh, season they changed it to a team format. Um, okay, we'll get to that in the history, but they they did a lot in the sixth season to try and save things. Um, <laughs> Uh, so in okay. in theory you could come in second place in that season and still be eliminated because the first place team is like scared that you're their competition or something um wow. and and that's another thing to keep in mind with this show that a lot it, which is also true for a lot of these uh competition shows the the rules and the format are very very flexible and they will do whatever is necessary to get the full show that they need. Um, yeah. That's why they're, they're scripted. I mean, I mean, I, I get that. Right, I mean, right, right, right. you know, you, you create as much drama as humanly possible. Well, and, and I don't mean even so much to the point of scripting the drama, which is definitely a thing. And we'll talk about that more in the history, but I mean, literally the gameplay it's like, it's as if, um, the rules of trading monopoly pieces would change from gate day from game to game right like where oh this game you can trade with anybody but next game you can only trade with the person to your left right like the rules are flexible like that where they can just make up stuff well yeah it's like if they if they bring out roaches and say okay everybody's got to need a roach and the whole world's like yep eat a roach they're like all right well that's not all now you have to eat live roaches right 
or how many roaches or yeah right yeah and the, and the truth is is that's probably not how it was but then they were like okay that wasn't enough of a challenge so now we need to like raise the insanity well and i think that's kind of the thing is that again we'll go over this in the history but the 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 show just had to keep one upping itself and eventually that's not sustainable right correct um, you go nuclear at some point yeah exactly exactly uh so that's stunt one the extreme physical stunt stunt two is the uh mental challenge like you were saying the eating bugs this to me is really what the show is known for uh right. it's probably where most of the scandal for the show came into play it's what people remember most um but the idea is just like you have to do something gross or you know that people wouldn't want to do eating uh pig awful or uh you know sit in a uh chair with a box around your head and have live rats dumped on your head you know um sometimes it would be like a pain endurance thing like eat a bunch of hot peppers or stuff right. like that um right. but again it's just meant to be you know almost endurance and uh dealing mental. with the with the mental anguish as much as yeah. anything else yeah yeah okay um the fun thing about this round is there is an additional rule of if you vomit you are eliminated i nice. like that because that's probably not something that happens on most game shows now now see for me it's like i would be like if you vomit you're eliminated unless you eat your vomit <laughs> Oh man! What well, I mean, that's what that had. I'm sure that crossed their minds at some point. Okay, go ahead. Whenever you're ready. Continue. All right. So whoever is left after stunt one and stunt two, we move on to stunt three, and this is basically just a recreation of an action movie scene, not literally um, until later. But that's the idea here, basically, right? You're hanging from a helicopter. You're driving a building, or I mean, you're driving a car off a building. You're right, right. Doing some sort of insane thing that nobody would ever do in real life. It's you know, movie high octane stunt, I think is a good, a good uh, term for it. Okay. Uh, almost always involving high locations, vehicles, a combination of the two. Um, but yeah, it's just something bonkers they got to do. And uh, again, it's, it's typically a, you know, do it or don't. Uh, but they are sometimes, um, you know, planned out in such a way that there could be a, um, a, a, measurable competition where one person wins and one person loses almost always it's set up so that it's not going to tie but i do say almost because it has happened where um nobody completed the last task and nobody com claimed the uh the final prize interesting um and yeah that, i mean that's basically it whoever wins the stunt three gets the fifty thousand dollars or twenty five thousand dollars depending on the situation uh with joe rogan proudly proclaiming that fear is not a factor for them um, and I mean, that's basically it. Uh, there were some special versions over the years. The one that I thought was the coolest was, uh, psycho fear factor, which mm -hmm. was all, uh, based around the movie psycho. Um, it took place in a sort of Bates motel location and they actually had to stay there overnight in between the days of shooting where they would do the different, uh, stunts. Nice. Um, uh, of course, tournament of champions, uh, people who have won come back to do, I guess, even worse things. Okay. Uh, couples Fear Factor, which uh, took place during the classic format of six contestants, so that was like a remix at the time. But then, like I said, uh, later on, that that uh, couples partner um, motif became the norm in, in season six. Um, so there you go. That's the gameplay. Do gross stuff, win a ton of money. You know, I'd like to call out Joe Rogan right now and just say fear is apparently a factor for him because he would not come on the podcast with us. Well, I don't know if that's necessarily a fear thing. I, until I hear otherwise, it is fear. All right, you know what? <laughs> I, I'm saying it. Joe Rogan's a coward. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, his podcast is amazingly <laughs> awesome. I mean, yeah, he, I, I don't, I don't necessarily listen to it that often myself, but oh, I, I, I got either, no problem with the guy. I, I, I'm, yeah, I like him just fine. Yeah, I think I, I think he's wonderful. I think he uh, definitely uh, has this whole podcasting thing down with science. God bless him. But absolutely, he's still a coward until he comes on our show. <laughs> what are you afraid of, Rogan? <laughs> We're gonna ask him tough questions. Like, yeah, did yeah, you yeah. have to drink the semen? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> well, we'll talk more about that coming up in the history. You've been listening to America's favorite game show podcast. Tell them what they've won.
and welcome back. Segment number three, episode number 35. Fear Factor is the featured show. It's America's favorite game show podcast. Tell them what they've won. Michael, history. Thomas, history. Yeah, so this literally began as an answer to Survivor. Survivor was doing very, very well, and NBC wanted to get in on the reality show game. So on June 11th, 2001, we have the premiere of Fear Factor, uh, hosted by stand-up comedian Joe Rogan. Uh, Previously, at that point, he was known for, uh, he was a UFC uh, uh, presenter, announcer, whatever you want to call it. Announcer, yeah, I think it's an announcer, yeah. Uh, And he was also on news radio, which, in my opinion, is, I would say, in the top five best sitcoms of all time, in my opinion, I love. You know, that I didn't. Wa- I didn't watch a whole ton of it, but a bunch of great stars came out. Absolutely, and the, the, the cat- fact that it had Dave Foley in it made my whole life. right and Phil Hartman and yeah, the the cast is just out of this world, and it's it's a yeah. it's a wonderful wonderful. Thing. It's do a rewatch right now. That's for sure. Yes, I highly recommend it. All right, go ahead. Uh, apparently, when Rogan started doing it, he uh, did not believe the show would survive. He was convinced the show was going to get canceled before the first season was over uh and he really only took the job to get material for his stand-up act he thought it'd be good to like see the crazy stuff that happened on this show that never took off and then be able to talk about it on stage (laughs) uh boy did he end up being wrong the first few seasons were a just absolute blast hit uh very very successful for nbc obviously uh like we said this was an answer or uh this was an answer to survivor so uh the the reality competition show game is is very very strong at this point and it it just was a huge hit for nbc um by the fourth season um it that's when they they started to take a downward turn and there were several reasons for this um a lot of it having to do with controversy um specifically around cruelty uh, to animals, um, mistreatment, that sort of thing. And I'm, I'm going to go on the record right now. I'm not a fan of PETA, but in this case, uh, I sort of think that the folks who uh, had an issue with the animal cruelty on this show uh, have a very strong leg to stand on. Yeah, dude, they were like pureeing rats and things. Exactly. Like, not, and not and cool, as much man. as people want to say like, oh, it's okay to eat a cockroach. It's like, it's really not like you're taking a live animal and putting it in your mouth and just chewing down on it. Like imagine if some giant thing did that to us, it would be horrifying. Yeah. I'm, I don't know. I agree with you. I'm not a big PETA fan, but there's legitimate moaning groan here exactly uh as a matter of fact one person uh said that for specifically the pureed rats uh he got so sickened by it that he was dizzy uh vomited ran into a door frame and hurt himself um and i'm sure there's a lot of people who would be the the oh well then don't watch it or you know he's a wimp or whatever but i mean i'm i'm very squeamish with medical stuff and if i see shots on tv i could see that same thing happening to me i wouldn't necessarily vomit but i would get dizzy and um, while it is true that I can just look away and that's what I tend to do, um, I do think there's a certain amount of like, okay, but why are you even doing this in the first place? You know? Yeah, very true. Very um, true. And as a matter of fact, there's there's an episode that is unaired uh, where the contestants had to drink donkey semen. And I mean, at, uh. at that point, when, you're, when your show is drink donkey semen, like you got to take a step back and look at your life and be like what are what are we doing right this, yeah like, this all comes to, down to like pushing the envelope and 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 it definitely is like how far are you going to take something before you know is that is that the point to jump the shark the shark you know what i'm saying well and it's that's the question because i think that the idea here is that um this show can't jump the shark not in that it is unable to but um jumping the shark is what ends the show right like you have to right. keep one upping it if you jump the shark then the show ends and basically that's what happens uh the sixth season the ratings are just in the toilets producers are uh, at a loss for new things to come up with and make things more extreme and more crazy um and i I got to admit, or not, not got to admit, I got to imagine there was a lot of just people stopped caring, right? Like at a certain point, the schoolyard dares of, oh, I dare you to eat a bug. It's like, who gives a crap? It's kind of like, to me, it's kind of like when you're playing Grand Theft Auto. 
Like you get a real joy out of like pulling somebody, pulling the firefighter out of the, the fire truck, beating him up, taking over the fire truck and just driving over hookers all over the place <laughs> for the first like five minutes. Sure. And then after that, you're like, okay, well, that was fun, but now what? Right? I, that's why I, I don't understand how people get so into those Grand Theft Auto games. It's fun for yeah. like five minutes, and then it's like, yeah. all right, cool. Um, and as much as I don't like American Idol, I am going to give them the thumbs up for being the nail in the coffin for Fear Factor. Um, <laughs> it, it it came along. Wow, we found a, we found a redeeming quality. Remember that when we do the American Idol show, dude? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that this this is worth like a quarter point or maybe a half point because absolutely. they put a, they put a nail in the Fear Factor bud coffin. There yeah. you go. Yeah, like I said, season six, it was just down in the dumps, and then American Idol uh, came along as competition, and it just. Oh, and it chewed up everything. Yeah, everything. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. There was no chance, no chance. Uh, they they really tried to hype up season six, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, just all sorts of like changes to the format and new like you know extreme games, whatever they could try and do, but none of it worked. Um, and they, uh, May two thousand six is when they officially announced the cancellation, and then it kind of stumbles across the finish line September twelfth of that year. Uh, so it it stayed along around for. A while after they uh announced the ending and i have to imagine that's just because they pumped so much money into all the changes to try and save it they had to um try to try sell to, it and try make some money get something yeah. out of it yeah exactly yeah. um apparently when it went into syndication it was the first network reality show to do so which i guess good for that it's got some history there uh but on dvd they put the first season out and it sold so poorly that they just canceled the whole rest of the thing i'm not even going to worry about it which honestly like i don't understand how you didn't have that foresight who the heck is buying this show on dvd the difference between this and a lot of reality shows is that this is really it's not serial it's very episodic exactly um and so it has the ability to run on you know syndication because Every show is is independently held. You know what I'm saying? Like when you're watching a Survivor, you need to really watch the entire season to understand the intricacies of the relationships to know like who was screwing who over on which tribal council kind right, of thing. But right. with this, I could definitely see where it would work in syndication. Now, the only reason I see buying this on DVD is because you were on the show. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yes, absolutely. And I, I, that's I, it. I, I definitely agree with the idea of syndication um, being a, a, a solid plan. Um, but DVD, it's just I, I don't I don't understand. Yeah. Who's buying that? Uh, yeah. But uh, speaking of syndication, reruns worked out well. Chiller, the horror channel, uh, they picked up reruns and did well enough that uh, it, it re-sparked NBC's interest. And uh, they decided to do a revival of the show in 2011, uh, again with Joe Rogan as host. Uh, and it ran for, um, I guess, not quite a year, December 12th, 2011 to July 16th, 2012. Um, I don't I don't remember this happening, and I don't know Neither do I. what was on it, but, like, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> yeah, well, and uh, they did. 2017, MTV picks up a version of it and uh, brings in the rapper Ludacris as the host. Um, it's basically the same show. They should do some, you know, tweaks and changes. A lot of uh, the the stunts were now pop culture references. Like they would actually pull specific stunts from specific movies, um, oh. and you know things like that. Uh, you know, it's MTV. You got to make it as as hip and appealing to the kids as you sure. can. Sure. Uh, that lasted two seasons. Surprisingly, May thirtieth, two thousand seventeen, to August twenty first, two thousand eighteen. Uh, so well done to them. But again, I I have not seen it. I don't know what Ludacris is like as a host. I I have to imagine that his choice was literally as shallow as they do ludicrous things on the show, and his name is Ludacris. So let's oh get boy. him. <laughs> um, I don't know anything about it, but again, who cares? What could they have possibly done to make it more interesting? I don't know. I, and you know, it's so, it's so funny, but at some point we should do a whole episode on how we would rewrite with a more appealing punch or punch up all of our most hated game shows that we've right. rated. Yeah. And, and to be honest, I'm not sure how I could redo this. It, to me, I'll it's a completely different show. Yeah. Based on actual fear. What you do is you get like 
maybe three people or something who know each other. You interview them about their fears, and then you make them stay in a haunted house and do the stuff to them that they're scared of. Yeah, but wasn't that the? Didn't Sharon Doherty have a a show for a period of time where they used to go and they would freak out people? They would find out what their fears are and they would freak them out. I'm not familiar with that, but the, I mean, well, it doesn't sound I, like I'm the just, worst idea. No, but I'm. I'm just. My thought was is that I think it's been done, and and I'm not gotcha. sure that. That you could you could punch it up. Plus, I think you, you, by calling it fear factor, there there needs to be something to be afraid of, and there are some people that just aren't scared by anything. Well, then you don't get those people on the show. <laughs> well, I get I get that, but the but the point is, is those people aren't going to watch the show either. And nowadays, well, as true. as as the younger generation becomes more and more like numb to reality, <laughs> yeah. Like, they don't care about some guy eating bugs. They're like, yeah, big deal, dude. I ate a bug yesterday. Whatever. Move on. <laughs> well, you know, and, like, and I, the other thing is, like, the idea of fear coming through on a TV show. Like, you're never really going to be able to get that, right? Because, like, if you did the haunted house thing, like, you'd know it's a show and it's not real. And, you know, well, like. Th yeah, th that's the whole point. I don't think there's a lot of fear there. I think there is some fear because, like, some people are like, oh, I'm not going to, you know, drive that bike between two buildings or whatever. But, like, I mean, it's it's not you. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> right. I don't know. To me, to me, Mike, and, and it's I guess it's time for us to rate him out. But um, to me, this this is just a, a game of you know, double dog dairy that you'd play in fifth grade. Uh huh. Well, uh, so here's the thing is this, uh, that was a thing that very much happened a lot. I, when I was in middle school, I used to uh, specifically like do stunts for 50 cents a pop uh, because that's how much a soda in the drink machine cost. And so I could get another soda with lunch and like right. I would eat bugs or a cup of dirt. Or I remember one day uh, they all collected up spit in a cup. And I drank it. Um, and, you know, at the time I was like, oh, the cool kids are giving me attention, not realizing that there's a bad attention. And that's what this show preys on is that bad attention is like yeah. people think they're like, I don't know. It's it's it feels very exploitative to me. Um, I, I, I did not like I didn't like anything about it. It wasn't <laughs> as like openly. um like offensive, I would say, as singled out was. But right. man, like I feel bad for everybody on the show, and not because they had to eat a bug, but just because of the degrading nature of the show. I will say, with that in mind, Joe Rogan does a great job of supporting them and cheering them on, and he is on their side. And apparently, even at some points during the show, he did the 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 task themselves. On the very first one, apparently he ate a cow eyeball so that the contestants weren't in it alone because nobody had ever done that before um so to his credit uh he does a very good job of being supportive so he does not add to the air of like um dehumanizing that the rest of the show presents but i've got to tell you because it's a reality game show a reality competition show if you will i don't feel bad for anybody that signed up for this because they did this strictly to get out there and and put themselves out in life as you see it was casted everybody was a hottie and those people knew exactly what they were getting into when they were there by the way they all went through medical checks they all signed the waivers they all knew exactly what they were getting into and the fact that joe rogan pokes a little fun on him, you know he does really support him but i do like the fact that he also pokes a little fun at them i'd be poking a lot more fun at him like ha ha you want to be famous for eating you know a uh, cow eyeball great here you go right yeah i don't know it, it just either way the vibe does not sit well with me now, and the other thing that bothers me on this whole thing is not only is it a game of, like, Double Dog Dare You, but essentially then they have to script it on top of it all? Right. And uh, like, uh, They literally, like, at one point, Joe Rogan makes a comment that, uh, like, about a, a mom and a son who are on a team together and they hug each other. And it becomes such a thing that the producers, like, when they went back and they cut it all up, they made it look like they had an inappropriate relationship to the point where the mother threatens to sue the production company like okay like it's not bad enough that you're eating cow eyeballs but now we have to like script additional drama in right well and like drama to that degree like it, it's like it's almost like jerry springer in its nature of just like unnecessary and 
Yeah. Like, yeah, it just it's the it's the Maury Povich. Uh, this was the this was the Jerry Springer to the Maury Povich, which was Maury Povich was Survivor, essentially. Right. And, and like like I said, when you're at the point where your show is dabbling in incest and donkey semen, like, yeah, give it up, dude. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm I, to me to me um, you know we, we, it's, it, I guess we should rate we've we've ranted now so we yeah. rant and rate rant and rate I I think that I we're gonna rate this on what um, hissing cockroaches okay <laughs> five hissing cockroaches uh, one to five hissing cockroaches I am going to say this isn't about the two area for me and and the reason why I'm going to give it some props is this one. I think it's a product of the era in which it came out. It had to compete with Survivor, so it had to be one step up. I understand pushing the envelope. I'm not a big fan of pushing it to this level, but I understand why they scripted, and I understand why they went as far as they did, because they had to compete with Survivor, and they right. did for a couple of years. So I'm giving them a little credit for that. I'm definitely giving Joe Rogan credit for this. I think he does a great job hosting this show. Um, and, and And again... It's the beginning of reality competition shows at this point. This is like when they were where they were babies, they were infants. And it was hugely popular. So two hissing cockroaches is where I'm going. Michael? Yeah, I, man, I'm I'm all over the place with this one. I think I'm going to land at one hissing cockroach with an apologies to uh bowling for dollars. I I wanted. <laughs> this is the second time you're apologizing for to bowling. For I know, dollars, I know, I know, and I, I like. I need to revisit bowling for dollars because, like, now the more that I've like compared it to other shows, and it's the same thing with singled out. Like, I think to me this falls somewhere between singled out and bowling for dollars because there is a game here. It's more than um, singled out has, and, and to be perfectly honest, as far as the game goes, it's more than bowling for dollars has. But there's so much about this show that I don't like that I have to it. I want it to be lower than Bowling for Dollars, but I don't know that I can actually fit it between those two. And right. so I'm landing at one hissing cockroach and I'm giving it all to Joe Rogan. He is the reason why I'm landing where I am with this show. Well, there was, there's two stories I want to tell real quick before we take off for the day. Um, the first one is my, my dad and I watched Survivor together. And I didn't watch the first couple episodes of it. I actually watched only like the last three episodes or four episodes of the very first season that Richard Hatch won. And the reason why I watched it, I had really no interest. It was my dad watching it. My dad's health was failing at the time, and he was getting ready to pass on, unfortunately. Um, so I was spending as much time with him as I could. And so I kind of got into watching it. And when Fear Factor came out, my dad and I definitely put it on. And we got to the, the first, I don't know, it wasn't the first episode, but it was one of the first episodes. And they got to the eating challenge, and I forget what it was they were eating. But my dad and I just both looked at each other and went, yeah, and I think we're done with this. <laughs> yeah. I, th I, th and, and, I, that's, I think that's the perfect summation of this show. And it was done. The second thing that we um, I, I mentioned earlier that I want to touch on real quick was the casting versus... Um, now, I understand yeah. they cast all of the game shows. And a regular game show, you're just looking for a certain level of excitement or sure. happiness. Or sometimes you're just looking for a certain amount of normality. You want our contestants... We want our contestants on this show to be a slice of American pie. Exactly. Had, you know, they, they need to be ordinary. They need to be the guy next door the girl next door i get that i also understand the casting for looks and what i mean by that is when i was in vegas if you were going to be a bartender at the pool they didn't hire people that looked like me to be a bartender <laughs> at the pool sure. even if i had all the bartending school skills in the world but in all fairness they said flat out when they were hiring they were looking for models who could bartend so the way they get around being sexist or, you know, um, or any other kind of prejudices there is because they were looking for a specific model for a specific image that they were putting out at the casino. And you went into that knowing that if you didn't get it, it wasn't necessarily because you didn't have the skills. You got it because you didn't have the look they were going for. And certain casinos would cast people in certain ways. When you went to old school downtown, they would cast as bartenders a lot of older folks who'd been in the industry for a longer period of time. You know why? Because that old school had that vibe of, hey, this has been around a while and it's cool. Look at these old guys who are working at the bar who can talk about what the what Vegas was like in the 1950s. Sure. So that's a long way to go to say that I don't hate the casting of hotties for the show, but it's certainly not something I can relate to. Yeah, I mean, it just... 
I don't know. I mean, sex sells, so you got it does. You got to yeah. put it out there, but it's, it's just the same it's, thing as the assistance that we were talking about last week. You know? Yeah. Um, and I mean, I don't. I don't like it. I don't agree with it. But what can you do? It's kind of a fact of human nature in a way. It is what it is, my friend. And that's, the that's the television yes. business. That's the television business. Yes, indeed, Tom. S O C K S. S O C K S. Yes. If you spell the word socks. You are saying it is what it is in Spanish. Oh, excellent. That's right. CKS. All right, that's all the time we have for this week. Michael. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, uh, everybody. Buzzer blog, all that stuff. Um, we love you all. Uh, tune in again next week when we'll bring you more stuff. <laughs> and remember, there's stuff online. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and, of course, tell them what they've won. Com. And, and if, if you like this, just do all the good stuff. Yeah, and if you didn't do all the bad stuff, go eat a bug or something. Oh, yeah, there it is. All right, see you next week, Mike. Stuff time. You've been listening to America's favorite game show podcast. Tell them what they've won. A JTEC audio production, copyright 2021. No part of this podcast may be reproduced by anyone without the express written consent of the creators. For more information or to contact us, please go to tellthemwhatthey'vewon.com. All right, Mike, what did you learn this week? I learned that uh, there's a parallel between this and the gong show, I feel. Um, but I, I've, I've learned to distinguish that thin line between entertainment that you see in the gong show and the exploitation that you see in Fear Factor. Um, in that, I, I think that since there's nothing on the line with the gong show, you have people who are on there for the fun of it. Um, whereas the, the contestants on Fear Factor are maybe not... Uh, as in as much control over what they get to do on the show. Well, I think the producers are definitely controlling the most out of everything. Yep. Entertainment and exploitation. That's that's the delineator for me. What about you? What'd you learn? So I learned that I understand that the, the reasons that people push the envelope, um, but I'm now starting to figure out that I don't always like it. Like, and there's certain ways I do like pushing the envelope, but in shows like this, it's just not for me. I agree. It's all about how the envelope is pushed. Copyright 2021, a JTEC audio production.